welcome back to the 20 Sessions. My name is Ebony Harris. And I'm Elisa Bokeen. And we are two brown chicks changing the face of therapy on both, both sides, sides of, of the couch. The couch. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Um, we hope that you had a, a few days off last week um, with some family and we have a few more holidays coming up. So we wanted to make sure we talk about um, just dealing with holiday stress, specifically around grief. Um, understanding that holidays, although obviously if you're grieving something, it can come up at any time, but definitely during the holidays, um, that's a time that could be a lot more difficult if you are dealing with grief. And so we wanted to kind of talk about what types of grief, you know, we know that people are going through different types to so talk about some of those different types that you may be going through, as well as some tips on how to deal with holiday grief or just grieving during the holidays. So we hope that you enjoy this. Uh, but first, just kind of chatting about the different types of grief. Obviously, everyone is different, dealing with something different. Um, a lot more people are dealing with grief because of so many factors that have impacted us this year. Um, so obviously, the one, when we initially think of grief, we think of the death of a loved one, a death of someone we cared about. Um, and so that's kind of like the main definition of grief. But we've talked about how grief can be in so many different forms. Right. I mean, it's it grief. It happens after there's been some sort of loss. And I don't know. I don't I feel like all of us have been touched by loss this year, uh, whether that be because someone we cared about has passed away, whether that's because there's been the loss of health, the loss of the life that we live, the loss of relationships, what have you, you know, we're going to talk a little bit more about all of that, but yeah, I don't, I don't know that any of us has really gone through this year without being touched by grief. Right. Cause like you said, even to the point of having to adjust to a different type of life, right. Is, is something that most people had to deal with, even if it was for a short period of time, there was still this, like, what is this? This isn't the normal. How do I adjust? How do I deal with this? Um, and, and earlier you were kind of saying grieving the freedom that we had before. Yeah. This sort of innocence that we had that you didn't have to think about going out and, you know, depending on where you were, you know, I, I've always kind of been somewhat of a germaphobe, right? So, you know, going to the grocery store during flu season a year ago was anxiety inducing also, mm -hmm. but I think it's, it, it's a different level now. You know, it's a yeah. different now where before, you know, just traveling, just going to have, going to have brunch, you know, with your friends that you could do that without, yeah, without having to think about the risk that you're taking. Yeah. And so uh, there's definitely been a lot of losses. And, and I think the innocence that we had pre-pandemic is definitely one of them. Yeah. And I think, like you said, even to the point of like, when you're thinking about the holidays, the normal traditions, the normal ways we typically celebrate it and having to kind of readjust and or not do anything at all. You know, I know right. people that were just like, they're just going to hang out at home and not see anybody because they don't want to put anybody at risk or um, put anybody in danger. So definitely mm -hmm. trying to make sure that, you know, you're keeping yourself and everyone around you safe. But that's something else that's kind of like this, everything, everything has been different. But then this is just another reminder of like, this is another thing that I just don't have control over. Right. And it's, and it's always amplified during the holiday season, yeah. you know, as, as, um, as therapists, we're always aware that this is a really tough time for many people. It's not always this joyous occasion for everybody. And so this has just made it that much more challenging. Right. Because right. So many of us are sort of in this, these bubbles you know, where more and more people are isolated. So definitely want to give everybody some tips on how to cope with all of this. Right, right. So the first thing, um, kind of like we said, we, we understand that around this time, this is pretty normal for people to be struggling with grief, even if they have been kind of dealing with it all, all year, the holidays kind of brings it up and makes it a little bit more raw. Um, mm -hmm. So the first thing is kind of just making sure that you're prepared for it, recognizing that if you felt like I was perfectly fine all year and everything was great that this could be a time that some things come up that you just weren't prepared for that you didn't know was going to happen. Um, so making sure that you're 
you know, understanding that if you start to feel differently, if you start to have some symptoms of like sadness or depression or, um, or just not wanting to sort of be around people or constant thoughts about people that you care about, um, that could be part of it as well is that, that kind of preparing your mind for that to possibly happen. Right. And it doesn't help that this is also the time of the year where we have less daylight during the day. Mm -hmm. You know, that really takes a toll on people. I think we're we're fortunate down here in the south where we still get more sunshine than other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. But certainly it's still challenging, you know, by I mean, it's 530 right now, p.m. that we're recording. (laughs) And it's it's like, oh, it looks like it's 8 p.m. outside. Yeah. So that can really take a toll on people. And I think the other way that it can manifest is anxiety. And I was just thinking that again, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it can really add to these feelings of anxiety, especially when we're not getting enough sunlight. And so being really mindful and intentional about that, you know, they sell those lamps we've talked about before Mm -hmm. that you can prepare for the, for the lack of daylight during the day. So just like you said, we, having a plan, like, I know this is the time of year, it can be really tough, may even be tougher this year, there's a lot going on, not getting as much sunlight during the day, how do I prepare for that? Yeah, and I think even recognizing when you talk about anxiety, I think definitely anxiety for ourselves, but even if you see your anxiety peaking for the people around you, like you're trying to control, and you're trying to make sure everybody's okay, and that they're, you know, that could be a symptom of grief and a little bit of fear. Um, and so being mindful of that as well, when you're just like on edge about everyone around you, it could be because there's some grief that you're dealing with as well. Right. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> um, but then I was like, I don't know what else I wrote. The next one, um, making sure that you're taking time to actually honor, um, loved ones, people that are no longer in your life. And again, this is no longer in your life due to death, no longer in your life due to the end of a relationship, or even just because of some boundaries that you have to set in those relationships. Um, you want to still be able to say like, um, you know, this person was important and maybe there were certain things that, that they brought to my life. Um, and so finding ways to honor those people, even in their absence. And I think we often think about that in particular when it comes to like death but you know something even if a relationship is that doesn't mean that it didn't have some type of an impact on you so it's okay to honor like what you've learned and to honor like what they brought to you or what you had as a part of that relationship so I think taking time to you know um I always think about like certain music when it comes to my dad like that reminds me of my dad or whatever especially around Christmas time um and just making sure that you're incorporating some of those things so it does feel like you're still remembering the person that that isn't there anymore. Right. You know, I, I, I think a big part of what you're talking about is, is really what is very healing often is ritual, right? So we have different rituals. Um, when people have a birthday, we sing happy birthday. You yeah. know, that's an example of a ritual. So coming up with some sort of ritual that might be important to you or significant to you and the loss of that person or that relationship that you had, um, whether it be like what you're talking about, maybe there's a specific um, way that you can incorporate that. And maybe even some of the ways that you celebrate your holidays, maybe this person played a significant role and there was some, some sort of tradition that they had or something that was significant to them, but to both of you, how do you incorporate that into how you're celebrating or recognizing the holidays today? And I think the other part is that ritual piece in celebrating. It's okay for there to be some grief along with your celebration, right? I think when we think of celebration, we're only thinking of the highs and the joy that comes from celebrating, but your grief can be part of that celebrating as well. You know, I I, I think it's so important for us to be able to, um, recognize the whole range of emotions that we have in order for us to be able to really process our grief. So celebrating, you can bring your grief along with you, you know, have some sort of ritual, which what you were talking about, Ebony, was how do I still sort of nurture this connection that I have to this person that I lost? Um, And that's, that's the part that I think as humans, you know, we've talked about this before, we're wired for connection. 
And that's part of what is so painful is we feel that connection broken or lost. And so how can I continue to, in a different way, honor that connection, create some ritual to further strengthen that connection and, and, and allow myself to celebrate in this way now? Right. I think that's exactly what it is. It's, it's, I don't have to completely dismiss that there was a connection there. I can take time to actually like acknowledge it. And I think that kind of goes into the next one, which is just showing gratitude. Um, gratitude can be shown in a lot of different ways. It can be gratitude of what you do have now. But even again, when talking about honoring um, relationships or, or someone that you did care about, I think a big part is what did they bring? You know, how do you how do you say that you're thankful for those experiences that you did have, even if you can't have those again this year? How do you acknowledge like gratitude for the traditions and the rituals that they brought into your life that now you're going to continue to do? Um, but again, just like I said before, also showing gratitude for what you do have now or maybe the growth that you've had when dealing with the grieving process. Even if you aren't where you, you want to be, there's always growth if you've gotten better than you were the day before. Um, so making sure that you're acknowledging and and being grateful for what is happening with you, what has happened in the past and what will happen in the future. Yeah, I think that's so important because again, as humans, we talk about how we are wired for survival. And part of being wired for survival is we have what's called this negativity bias, where we're always looking for the threat um, or perceived threat in any sort of situation. So by practicing gratitude, we're literally rewiring our brain to look for the good, to look for what we do have, to look for the ways that we have, you know, I don't want to know, I don't know if I want to use the word gained, um, but what do we actually still have, you know, because it is part of like our body's way and our psyche's way of protecting us to look at all of the things that we, you know, we may have lost and how that can be detrimental to us. And so it takes real intention and work to be able to redirect that. And, and, and I'm thinking about just even how Thanksgiving this year, how we had to sort of adjust to what that looked like. Like you said, some people, you know, didn't have any contact with anyone at all. Some people adjusted. I know within my own family, you know, we were not going to eat around one another, um, but we gathered outside with masks. And one thing that we usually do is we, we go around the table and we give gratitude for what we're thankful for that year. And so it looked a little different this year. Everybody was socially distanced, wearing their masks outside, and we still did it in that way. So I think part of what we have to do also with that gratitude is maybe get creative and how can we still find what is there still left to celebrate? Right. I think that's I think that's true. Like get get creative and what the new normal looks like instead of being so focused on the previous what we did before. And even how do you acknowledge small movements in the right direction, if that makes sense? Um, again, it, sometimes we're like, we don't like to show gratitude unless it's something big, unless we see this grand change. And the, the reality is small movements in the right direction will get you to where you want to go. So just make sure that you're also acknowledging like, okay, no, but this, I do feel better. You know, I do feel good. Or I did, you know, I did enjoy this um, as opposed to being so caught up in like, but I should be over it. Cause that's, you know, everyone's favorite phrase. Yeah. I should be over it by now. Uh, allow yourself that space to to grow at the pace you're supposed to grow. And, and, and you know, I, I kind of talked about this earlier this week too. Like if you can't find gratitude, just reach for grace, right? Like, so maybe you can't find the gratitude in, in anything. That's okay if that's where you are, especially if you've had like a tremendous amount of loss this year. And so many people, you know, due to COVID, due to just natural kind of everyday occurrences that, that have happened. Um, give yourself some grace then if you can't find that gratitude. It's, it's okay if that's the space that you're in also. And I think also remembering that even if you apply this and there's been as much loss as there is, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to take away all the pain, take away all the grief. And we always say this, like that's that's not even the point of this. We're just trying to help give you some tools to make it a little bit more bearable and manageable to get through until you can get out of this dark place that you might be in. 
So with that being said, um, some of the tips that I had also was, again, I'm really big on making space for all of your emotions. Yeah. And I think too often, again, especially when the emotions are as painful as they are, we want to get away from them and we want to get away from them fast, whether that's self-medicating through drugs, alcohol, food, shopping, you name it. Um, but I think when we incorporate practices such as mindfulness, which we hear that a lot, so what's the benefit of that? So something like a practice like mindfulness where you're training your brain on how to focus its attention in a very intentional way, this can really help us because so often part of why we are struggling is because our mind is everywhere. It's in the, mm -hmm. it's, you know, the fear that we might feel about the future or what has happened in the past, but it's anywhere but where we are right now. So taking on a practice right. like mindfulness helps us to make space for our emotions by just being able to take the observer role of the emotions. And I think that's the part where, um, you know, sometimes I'll tell people like, well, what do you mean make space for it? Like, you just want me to sit there and be <laughs> sad all day long. Right. It's like, no, but there is something where so much of the suffering that we have is because of the value that we assign to different emotions or the value that we assign to certain experiences. So by practicing observing our emotions and not getting swept up in them, it helps to diffuse those thoughts that we have, which helps to diffuse some of the emotions. And it helps us actually to not stay in them as long because so often we're trying to run from them. And so we're just suppressing, suppressing, which we know all it does is just add fuel to that. Um, so by learning how to observe them, sit with them, make space for them, we're, it's actually much easier to let go of them too. So yeah, making space I, for your emotions is big. That's, it, it's so big. And I think sometimes the issue is that we don't always have the way, we don't know how to label those emotions. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I even think about it as what behaviors are you doing that are either abnormal or that you don't, like you said, if I'm, I'm not going oh, to drink more or I'm trying to spend time with everybody all the time or I'm trying to control everything, like taking space to kind of say like, okay, well, why, what is this doing for me, right? What, if I don't do this, then what may come up? Because a lot of times that's what we're doing. We're trying to like uh, cope, self-soothe, but we don't always do it in the most productive way. And while coping skills are really, really good, it's important to acknowledge why we're doing it. What are we feeling or what are we scared to feel? Because to your point, if we continue to just kind of run and do something else and find ways to distract ourselves, it's never going to get addressed. And it just comes back stronger and stronger because, you know, our emotions are kind of like, oh, you don't you don't see me now. Let me show you something else. <laughs> you know, like, I'm just going to yeah. keep coming and keep coming. So you want to acknowledge it. You want to be able to you know, and again, to your point, it's not saying sit and mope and be sad and, oh, I need to make sure everybody knows I'm sad. It's just acknowledging, like, oh, this doesn't feel good. What is this? You know, labeling it, giving it a name, finding out where does this come from? Why is it there? Like, it's kind of like giving a voice to all parts of you as opposed to yeah. just like the, the good parts, the positive parts. Like, like you said, we put values on a lot of our emotions when they're all valid. So and I think we have to normalize being sad <laughs> during grieving. Yep. You know, yep. I, I think that's the other part is I think particularly in, in this culture, in this society, right? We don't allow ourselves to grieve because we live in this microwave society where we're supposed to like get over things really quick. But traditionally for so many of us in our cultures, in our communities, this period of grieving was really seen as a sacred time for people, like where you were given like up to a year when people understood like during this year you're in a really fragile state and it's a sacred state where you're going through this Im immense challenge and also the transformation that happens during grief and so people honored that right like this is actually a, a place where people would honor that you were in your grief and I think now the way everything is set up you know so you take a month off and you come back and you should be good to go right you get like so I think we have to really also normalize that grief, especially when we have a major loss, like somebody that we love, that's not something you necessarily get over. You just learn to live with it. And so I think we have to be able to, I think it takes a while for us to really be able to get in that space where, I mean, death 
especially is one of the, the, it's the big unknown. It makes us, you know, uncomfortable and anything that makes us uncomfortable in, in, in the unknown is anxiety inducing. And so anytime there's loss, it reminds us of our own mortality. Yeah. So I think we just, you know, there's these bigger themes and I don't think that we always give ourselves like even even honor that for ourselves and in our lives and what that looks like. So we have to really make space for all of that as well. So the last thing I would say um, is what was I, was that? I was muted, but that's why I was just agreeing. <laughs> The last thing I would say is, again, going back, we are wired for connection. So we are not supposed to grieve in isolation. You know, that often is our tendency. Like, we want to kind of go. And that's not to say that you can't have your moments and, and, and take your time, because sometimes that is exactly what we need for our healing. But again, it's always about balance. It's always about seeing, like, when does that taking time for yourself become isolation? And so part of our healing process really depends on human connection. And so don't, you know, nobody should have to have to grieve alone. And so look out, you know, to the, to what's in your community. There's often free support groups in your community where you can join and, and grieve alongside other people who really understand what you're going through. Of course, there's always therapy, right? There's therapists that specialize in grief. So having somebody to process some of this with, you know, certainly reach out to your friends and to your family. But just like we say with everything and everybody else is you never want to have just one thing that you go to. You want to have sort of this, a lot of different tools in your right, toolbox right. so you're not exhausting your friends and your family. And I think also when somebody hasn't gone through a major loss, like the loss of a loved one, they're not always going to know what to say. They're not going to always know what to do. And they might even fumble it up, mm. right? So I think understanding that as well is really important to us and why we also need sometimes professionals when we're in this state. So definitely don't isolate yourself during grieving. Yeah, I think it's it's very easy to just feel like no one gets it by myself. And then, you know, don't want to talk about it, don't want to bring other people down, don't want to, you know, burden other people. But one, you have people in your life who want to support you, so allow them to do that. But then to your point, also seek out other help if you need it. I think it's amazing when, and that's part as therapists, one of our goals is for our clients to have the resources and have the support and have created this like wealth of tools that can help them um, as they're going through different things. And so make sure that you're building up that toolbox and make sure you're getting, um, having a lot of different places for you to go when you do need some time to kind of process and deal with it. Yep. So well, There you have it, folks. All We're right. hoping that this will be helpful to some of you because um, it is a tough time and it is sometimes really difficult to, to find gratitude or to, or to find the joy during this time of year. So if you are struggling even more this year, that is understandable. Mm -hmm. It is to be expected. Um, so hopefully some of this will help to give you at least a little bit of relief. Yes. So thank you guys for listening. Make sure you follow us across social media at Melanin and Mental Health, Melanin Health on Twitter. Go check out melaninmentalhealth.com to find you a dope therapist. If you're looking for some dope merchandise, that's over there as well as our previous podcast. So um, we appreciate you all for listening and or watching and we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.